Disclaimer, we were limited to a short 10-minute drive at Hyundai's research and development facility in Namun, about a 90-minute drive from the South Korean capital of Seoul. The closed loop didn't provide much in the way of road variation, and we reached a blistering top speed of 45 miles per hour with all of three opportunities to use the brakes. The Kona we drove was a Korean spec model suspension and steering tuning will be adjusted for the US, though we couldn't get a clear answer on what sort of changes it entails. Expect the US model to be a bit softer than what the Koreans and the Europeans will see, though we'll have to wait until a full first drive to be sure Hyundai has been on a roll lately, releasing a series of solid if not exactly ground-breaking products, though until now the company was missing an entry into the ever-burgeoning B-segment crossover for several years, compacts like the Honda HR-V and Mazda CX-3 have ruled the class, but Hyundai is going all-in on crossovers, with several new models on the horizon the first one out of the gate is the Kona. In the next few years, we'll see a model that slots below the Kona and a large SUV that will sit above the Santa Fe. We got our first look at the new model at Hyundai's new Motor Studio, a place that's half interactive museum and half high-end conference space. The Kona's styling, a mix of original and derivative design elements, is sure to be divisive. The most standout feature is the plastic cladding that comes in either black or grey. Depending on the body colour Hyundai is calling it armour we just hope it's affordable to replace. The front wears Hyundai's cascading grille, an element that's making its way across the automaker's lineup. It's flanked by what Hyundai is calling as calling composite headlights. It's a split design that places the slit-like turn signals above and separate from the actual headlights. It looks very similar to the current Jeep Cherokee, odd considering the controversy that model caused a few years ago.